Here's one of my favorite questions because it is very frequently used in a test. You're presented with the matrix, 4x3 matrix. Each cell in the matrix has numbers. For example, first row in the matrix has numbers 2, 8, 7, and 6. Second row has numbers 9, 5, 9, 5. And the third row has numbers 9, 7, 4, and one number in the bottom right corner is missing. And this is exactly what you need to calculate. You can choose from one of four different choices. Choice A, 5. Choice B, 7. Choice C, 9. And then choice D, 11. Do you think you can come up with the answer? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds. This is about as much time as you will get in the test. Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct answer together. The key to solve this problem is to determine the pattern. And the pattern either can be in the rows or in columns. In this particular case, let's check the columns first. And then what you see is that each column adds up to the value of 20. For example, 2 plus 9 plus 9 is 20. 8 plus 5 plus 7 is 20. 7 plus 9 plus 4 is 20 as well. We also want to check if there is a pattern with the rows. And there is no pattern. Because the first row adds up to 23. 2 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 equals 23. And the second row adds up to 28. 9 plus 5 plus 9 plus 5 equals 28. So there is no pattern. Based on this information, you can calculate the missing value in the fourth column. 6 plus 5 plus question mark equals 20. So the answer is C, 9. This is the missing value. Hopefully you figured it out and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Here is another puzzling question you might find difficult to solve. You are presented with four triangles. Each triangle has a number in the corner. And you need to calculate one of the missing numbers in the upper corner of the black triangle. You have four different choices. You have choice A, 1. You have choice B, 2. You have choice C, 3. And you have choice D, 4. Can you determine the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge together. Determining the pattern is the key to solving this challenge. For example, if you add up the numbers in the lower left corners, 6 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 in all triangles, you will get to the sum of 10. Same thing happens when you add up the numbers in the bottom right corners of the same triangles. 2 plus 3 plus 0 plus 5 also equals 10. So same logic can be applied to the upper right corners of the triangles. As you can see, triangles are colored to confuse you. So you're only concentrated on the numbers inside of each triangle, but you're not looking across multiple triangles. The correct answer to this problem is choice A, 1, because this is the math of getting into 10 with the missing number. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I am excited to take advantage of the opportunity and share with you how to solve these types of problems on the test. Typically, when you get a problem, you need to determine which object does not belong to the group. In this particular case, you need to determine which square doesn't belong to the group. You are presented with four different squares, choices A, B, C, and D. Each square contains two circles inside. In the large circle, quarter of each circle is missing and instead replaced with the small circle. All squares also have triangles in the corner. Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the answer. Do you see the answer? Let's continue to see how we can solve this challenge and get to the correct solution together. The key to solving this challenge is to detect the pattern. This is the skill that you need to develop to be successful in the test. Because there are two shapes here present in this question, triangles and circles, you should try to detect pattern among triangles and then among circles. In this particular question, there is only one pattern, pattern of the triangles. But there are some sophisticated questions in the test which might include patterns for both shapes. In this particular case, the pattern is 
that the square should contain the equal number of black and white triangles in the corners. Triangles in the square A positioned diagonally across each other. White triangles are located in the upper left corner and in the bottom right corner. And black triangles are located in the bottom left corner and in the upper right corner. You can see that the same pattern exists in the shape B, two white triangles and then two black triangles. And in the shape C, two black triangles on the left and two white triangles on the right. But if we look at the choice D, you see that there are four black triangles in the corners. Circles in this picture do not have a pattern, and their primary goal is to confuse you. If you look at the circles closely, you see that the large small circle pattern doesn't exist. We have black white, shape B black white, shape C white black, and then shape D white white. Based on this information about the circles, we should ignore them and focus on the triangles inside the squares. This is why the odd shape, the shape that doesn't belong to the group, is the one that does not have equal distributions of all colors in the corners. So the correct answer here is choice D. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Very frequently on the test, you might be asked to detect the pattern. In this question, we're being asked which item comes next in the sequence. And we're presented with the sequence of items. Six items in the sequence are visible. 0, 2, 6, 12, 20, and 30. And the next item is missing. And you're being asked to select one of the four following choices. Choice A, 42. Choice B, 44. Choice C, 46. And choice D, 48. Do you see the answer? It may or may not be obvious, depending upon your skills of detecting the pattern. Like it or not, we're going to continue and I'll share with you the answer. As with any type of question, the key is to determine the pattern. To determine the answer in this particular case, you need to increment previous number by the greater even digit in the sequence. You can even come up with the formula. And in our case, the formula to determine the next number would be current number plus two multiplied by current position. Let's see how it works. For example, let's take the number zero. This is the first number in the sequence. To determine the next number in the sequence, we need to add previous number, which is zero, and then two multiplied by one because number zero has the first position in the sequence. Instead of using the formula, you can also use the next even number and add it to the previous number. The even numbers are two, four, six, and you can increment them down the list. So you can add two to zero. The next one would be four. Two plus four equals six. The next number would be six. Six plus six is 12. The next number would be eight and 12 plus 8 equals 20. The number after that would be 10, so 20 plus 10 would be 30. And the number after that would be 12. And 30 plus 12 equals 42. The correct choice here is choice A, 42. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I am very excited to present you with simple but at the same time very tricky question, which tests your math skills as well as attention to details. Florist has 77 beautiful plants. All but seven were sold. How many plants are left? You have four different choices. Choice A, seven. Choice B, 77. Choice C, 70. And choice D, 84. Do you think you know the answer? Let's continue to see how we can get to the correct solution together. The answer to this question is very simple. Seven plants are left. The answer is hidden in the tricky worded sentence, all but seven sold. So the correct answer here is choice A, seven. Hopefully you've read this question correctly, understood it very well, and solved it on your own. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. 
Thank you for your endorsement, support and patronage. Please also check out additional resources in the description section of this video. I also encourage you to check resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net. Please leave your feedback, corrections or suggestions in the comment section of this video. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.